So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Peter. Uh, I'm from Red Hat. I work in the burn office, and today I talk to uh, and today I came here to talk to you about the uh, Ball. So, um, in Red Hat, I'm working like for al almost six years now. Uh, I uh, today or, or these days I'm mostly working on the reference architectures for OpenShift where we use uh, Ansible a lot so uh, hopefully I will uh, I can tell you something new what you don't know so um, in this talk in you know, like four four main parts I will uh, I, I can go through the crash course of Ansible but it's optional and uh, here I could I would like to ask you who already do already did something with Ansible before, like it's uh, l let's say it's a very beginner level. Okay, and who is advanced level in Ansible? Okay, and who never saw Ansible before? All right, so I'll go through the uh, crash course so you know about Ansible a bit, and you can understand the uh, uh, later slides. Uh, then uh, I will talk about how you can manage containers with Ansible and how can you build um, how can you build images uh, with it as well. And in the end, there is a short information about how how you can con consume already existing Docker Compose with Ansible without rewriting it. So, and before I start, uh. There is like the the reason why I'm doing this talk or uh, why I created it before because uh, before I started working with Ansible I did something uh, with Docker Compose but uh, later when I came to the Ansible I found out that Ansible is like really powerful and I mean like really really powerful when compared to the Docker Compose because with Docker Compose you can manage just containers. But with Ansible, you can manage your whole infrastructure, like anything uh, you can think of uh, in the operating system. And uh, and when you think about it, the 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 configuration file writ is written in YAML for both of them. So uh, using Docker Compose and Ansible is like um, pretty similar. So uh, why should you invest in a learning new tool, uh, which is like really single use case? when you can use other tool which is like uh, almost for anything. Also another thing which I really like about Ansible is that it's suitable for any scale. You can easily manage single computer with it as well as like uh, tens on or hundreds computers. You can manage uh, the, the computers or you can configure the computers from your own workstation which is like perfectly fine but uh, if you start to using or if you start to manage like thousands of computers with Ansible, you should get uh, probably Ansible Tower or at least uh, learn how to use Ansible Pool Mode, which um, which uh, doesn't push the configuration from your uh, notebook, but uh, it pulls the configuration on the server from the central rep repository of your uh, configuration files and then applies the configuration on the local server. Uh, Ansible Tower is like really powerful. You can see uh, it has a web interface where you can see progress on all your hosts and you can execute uh, scripted tasks uh, directly from the from the web interface. But uh, currently it's not open source yet but there is like a free free trial or free edition until a couple of nodes or something like that, I know. Uh, open sourcing is on the plan. And uh, also this talk is uh, suitable for mid, uh, small to mid scale because uh, in the t uh, in on the slides uh, we will be managing uh, containers directly with Docker. And uh, when you when you really start uh, thinking seriously about containers, you probably shouldn't uh, stay with the Docker itself, but uh, you should probably try to look at some orchestrator or uh, something more powerful because uh, 
containers and, and Docker are itself really a low-level technology. Uh, it's only for single host and when your application starts to scale on the multi and you need to uh, utilize multiple nodes, uh, the, you, you will have to find a solution and you will have to uh, reinvent the wheel eventually uh, so you can like uh, effic effic efficiently scale or utilize multiple nodes with your application. So, um, if you are serious, you get look into Kubernetes or OpenShift. They are orchestrators, so uh, they natively work with multiple nodes and, ca and can uh, automatically scale your application uh, if you need to. Uh, under the hood, there is still Docker. There's, it's still uh, uh, it's still the containers. It's the same. It's still the same containers we will be working with but on a higher level with kind of less work. OpenShift is built on top of Kubernetes, so uh, everything Kubernetes know, OpenShift knows as well, as, uh, but it also adds features for developers such as uh, integrated registry, build service, pipelines, and I don't know what. So uh, you can uh, configure OpenShift in a way that once you push code to the Git repository, uh, the OpenShift will build the image and uh, test it and push to the production if you choose so. So uh, that's just a uh, quick intro now about the Ansible itself. I don't want to lose too much time here. So if you if you feel that you are really lost and you don't understand something on the slide, like there's no way how you could uh, just put your hands up and let me know and I'll, I'll explain so uh, you can enjoy the rest of the talk as well. So, the first steps. Ansible is packaged in most of the distributions in Fedora. It's called Ansible, but I believe it's in the most of the distributions. It's the same. Uh, if you want to work with Docker, you also need the, mm, the Docker Python bindings uh, because Ansible is written in Python, and every and for everything Ansible does is using uh, Python bindings, let's say. So, uh, so the Ansible itself doesn't mm, call Docker binary itself, but it's using the Python library. Now. Uh, probably you know the ad hoc commands. Just you can use Ansible directly from uh, from the terminal, but that's not that interesting. There is an inventory file which uh, configures the host you want to connect to with Ansible. Uh, there are in the brackets there are groups. You can do various stuff there. There's also some basic configuration. Uh, by default, use uh, Ansible using SSH to connect to remote host, but there is also the local connection for local host and the Docker connection for Docker containers. Now, the dynamic inventory. Who knows about dynamic inventory? Can I ask? Okay, so uh, the, the first inventory, the static inventory, the file where you uh, where you put every host you want to manage into the file, it has to have its own line, and Ansible needs to know how to connect it. Dynamic inventory for Ansible is a script which queries some provider. It can be, I don't know, OpenStack, Azure, AWS, GCE, and it automatic automatically gets all the information about the instances. Uh, without the need, need for you to write them out. There is also a dynamic inventory for Docker. Uh, you just basically you just download the file and, and, e and set it as, as inventory for Ansible. And uh, dynamic inventory for Docker allows Ansible to know about all running containers on your host. You can, all, uh, you can as well configure the uh, the remote host of the Docker uh, of the Docker daemon. That's that's not a problem. But for us, uh, let's say we are using the the local uh, the local Docker daemon. So uh, yeah, in this way, we Ansible can automatically know about all running containers without specifying them. And for example, if we create some container with Ansible. 
uh, we can uh, we can use it later in the same play without needing to without the need to specify in the static inventory file, which is like really handy. And also, if you are working on the cloud stuff, for example, if you have like 100 instances in AWS, you also don't want to like specify all the instances in the file. You, you can use just a uh, uh, dynamic inventory. OK, so the basic unit in Ansible is task. It has a name and, a sum and an invocation of module, which accepts some parameters. In this case, I'm installing HTTPD package with YAM. But that's, that's easy. Uh, this is also the same task, just uh, written differently. Usually, the second form is used because it's uh, much uh, much more readable. But uh, sometimes you can use the first one. It's it's uh, up to you. Uh, every task uh, can have some attributes. It can have tags and so on. Currently, there is uh, in the latest version, Ansible, which is 2.3. There is more than 1,000 modules already done. Uh, you can s find them all in the documentation. There's a lot of categories you can go through. Now, uh, by connecting a task uh, and uh, associating them with a host where you want to run them, uh, you create Playbook. Playbook has, uh, again, it's a name. It specifies host where you want uh, the task to run. So in this case, it's, it's a group of web servers, which I defi defined in the static inventory uh, before, for example. And here I, I install HTTPD package. I create the configuration from template, and I start the service. Yeah, easy. There are also uh, handlers. Handlers are just a stacks tasks, but they are run after some uh, task change its state. So when I first time when I run uh, first time when I run this playbook, all tasks will be changed. But uh, if I run it second time, Ansible can check if the task need to be executed, and if not, it will it won't run. So it just skip the tasks. But for example, if I run it first time, everything is okay because uh, the HTTP package is not running, and I create it and I create its configuration, and then I start it. So it loads the new configuration. But if in the later time I change the configuration, the template, and uh, run the task without the handler, the configuration would change, but uh, the HTTP service wouldn't be reloaded. So the new configuration wouldn't be uh, right. And for that, there are handlers which are s which states that uh, this handler restarts the Apache service, and when the configuration change, the Apache service will be restarted. Okay, so there are a lot of features. There are variables which are like most powerful feature of Ansible. There are sim simple variables, complete uh, complex variables. Uh, for every variable, you can use filter. So in this case, I'm saying that if epicconf uh, variable is not defined, use the default. The variables are used with the double curly braces. Uh, template, templates uh, for template, Ansible is using the Jinja templates, known from Python. So if you know Django or did some uh, web page with it, you already knew it. So again, some loops, conditionals. And so on. Now, within the playbooks, you can also uh, use a couple of control stru structures like conditionals, loops, whatever. And there are also roles. Roles allow you to organize your task in a manageable way, uh, manageable and um, reusable way. So you just don't you just don't um, write like many playbooks for every host, but you create a role. For example, in this case, I'm creating a role which configures the web server. Uh, this is the, the this is the default directory structure Ansible knows knows about and can automatically load files 
uh, files fro from the specific directory, so you don't need to specify full path to do template, templates and files. You just uh, specify the name, and Ansible knows where to look for them. So yeah, and main YAML is read automatically. <coughs> then in the in the role in the playbook, you just include the role uh, in web server, and that's it. This is like the preferred way, but uh, later in the talk, I'm I'm not going to speak about the roles. Everything will be in playbook, but uh, so we know if you want to organize your uh, tasks better. There is also Ansible Galaxy, where you can share your roles or download already uh, roles already created by community. There's like a lot of them. Especially check out the Girling Guy author, which is which have a uh, lot of roles and they are like really high quality so even if you don't need them but want to learn how to write Ansible roles uh, it's like awesome resource uh, to read them and read them and learn something something from them he also wrote a book which is pretty good if you want uh, to look into it more another like this is a kind of advanced uh, topic uh, Ansible provides a vault service for uh, and for encrypting encrypted passwords so you don't need to specify the passwords in plain text in your uh, playbooks you can create the encrypted file which then looks like this and you can uh, include it in the playbook just by this I'm I, I included it here so you know uh, about the possibility if you need to use it then if you need to then when you're running playbook you need to specify that uh, Ansible should ask for password or can read the password for text file or from some script okay that's it uh, did you get anything from this? so do you know, do you have a rough idea about Ansible and how would you use it, right? somehow, okay did you learn something what you didn't know about before? Yes, so uh, awesome, at, at least something. So, Ansible Live Containers, and this is a huge topic, and I, I'm going to like scratch the surface because Ansible has, uh, for example, different sub projects. It's called Ansible Containers. Uh, you can look it up. It's uh, also for building and uh, and uh, managing and shipping containers so with a couple of playbooks you can like create container and ship it to Kubernetes, OpenShift, whatever but this is mostly used for or what I'm going to talk about is uh, mostly used uh, when you have one or more servers and you want to run a couple of services uh, on them with containers and you don't want to for example lose time with setting up the something something bigger like Kubernetes or OpenShift mentioned earlier so uh, Ansible has four main docker modules it's for managing containers itself uh, for managing docker network for building uh, images and managing them so Docker image with Docker image you can not only build but also push, uh, pull and push uh, images on the host. And there is also Docker service which utilizes the Docker Compose files. Now, so first example, uh, this is a simple uh, application in single container. Uh, it's called Gitty. I'm not sure how you do spell it, but it's a fork of Gox, which is um, like kind of uh, self-hosted uh, GitHub, let's say. So uh, when you want to create simple container from one application, you just uh, use something like this. Uh, it really looks like Docker Compose. There is uh, it's a complete playbook. If you run it, it, it should work. And here we s we give a name to the play. We say we want to run this uh, playbook on the local host and uh, there is a single task in the play which creates a docker container with name, my kitty, we, ca we say that we want to use this image, it's um, the regular format you, you are known, you know for uh, docker run. You specify state, uh, it's a good 
practice to uh, specify state for every task you write. Usually the default is fine. I think the default for this uh, module is started, but like to be sure it's uh, really good to write, write it down. Um, there are three other states for Docker containers, but you, you, I guess you can understand what they mean. Uh, present just ensures that the, the, uh, that the container is present on the machine, but it may be running or stopped. Absent there is it. Uh, absent means it's it's not on the container, and stopped means that the uh, container is present, but 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 not running. Now published ports is the same as the P option with uh, Docker Run, and the volumes is equal to the V option to Docker Run. Now to run this file, you you just uh, use Ansible playbook command and specify the path uh, to the playbook file, and that's it. It will it will it will check if the image exists. If not, it uh, Ansible automatically downloads it and create the container. Okay, but uh, this is like very single use case uh, container, and uh, I'm sure we can definitely make it a little bit better. Um, so let's try to do it. Here, it's the same. Uh, it's the same play, play with a couple of uh, features added. First is pull true, which means that Ansible will always check if there is a new version of the container. And if it is, uh, Ansible will download the new version and recreate the container with, uh, from the newer image. So I think there's, there's something similar to it as well in the Docker Compose. Uh, we specify a set policy to always, which is again the same as for the Docker run. We add the uh, Etsy local time uh, to the container, so there is a correct time zone in the uh, containers in the container. It's, it's, that's easy, but as, as well we defini define new variable called C state, like container state. We set the default to start it and use it in the state parameter. Now, uh, if you run this file the same way as the as before, it will the um, uh, the outcome will be the same. It started container, but now we can easily redefine the C state variable on the command line. And uh, with, when we say the C state is absent, uh, the container will be deleted and destroyed from the machine. So we give the playbook a little bit more power, and it's some more a little bit more usable. But uh, that's let's say that's not good enough for us because when we when we remove the container, the volume will stay on the host, and we, we want to deal with that as well. Because let's say, for some for some trialing and testing, we want to remove everything uh, from the host the Ansible created. So we make it even more complex. We add a new variable called wipe. By default, it will be false, and the C state variable will be um, the default of C state variable will depend on the variable wipe. And here, and we say that if wipe is true, uh, the C state be, will be absent and otherwise started. So by default, again, uh, the Ansible will create the container, but when we specify the wipe. Uh, variable to true, the C state will change it absent automatically to absent. Mm, we will change its content to absent, and then we edit another task uh, for managing Docker volume, and we say that if wipe is true, uh, delete also the Docker volume, and basically that's it. Uh, the bool needs to be here. Uh, we need to cast the wipe variable to bool because when specifying on the command line, uh, the content of the variable is uh, always string, and the uh, string false is true. So, yeah, we need to cast it to bool. Yeah, ignore errors to true means that by default, when Ansible creates, uh, when Ansible run the playbooks and one uh, task fails, like the return code is not a zero, uh, the Ansible will stop uh, the play and error out. So when uh, we run 
uh, this playbook with the wipe through twice. Uh, the second time this uh, this command will fail because uh, the the volume doesn't exist but we really don't care about it so we specify the ignore errors to true and if it fails it's it's just fine okay so something more complex now let's imagine you have a use case where you want to run a single container uh, or a single image uh, multiple times for every user. So let's say Mailpile is a web mail client and uh, you have like three uh, free users who want to use them but every user wants uh, its own instance. But the, but the image uh, or the containers are will be the same, just uh, they, dif they, they will differ in only in a couple of things. So, first you create a new file co called in this case container YAML. Uh, it's not a playbook, it doesn't have host specified, it just, it's just a list of tasks. And here we prepare the Docker container uh, as from before, just one thing we need to uh, every unique uh, item must be variable. Must be as variable. So name, uh, volume name, as well as uh, port on the host must be unique for each uh, for each container. Otherwise, the rest is the same. And now, in your playbook, you specify a new variable, which is a list of map. Um, containing name and the port of the host. So uh, we want three instances of this container and everyone and, and it should be listening on, it, on its own port. Now we just use the include task which uh, takes uh, the file and uh, includes it to the playbook uh, in a loop. So for every item in the containers variable and then we specify for every include a uh, specific uh, variable. So container name will be mailpile dash mailpile the name from the containers variable, John, and port will be item.port, so port in this case. So this, um, yeah, it's, I have it here. So this uh, will create three containers uh, sim uh, with the different name and different port and different volumes uh, for every every user, so you don't need to uh, write too much about it. Uh, also, the variable vibe C state will uh, will the all of all three variables will be available in the in the included uh, included file, so you can use cstay directly in there because of the variable scopes goes down there as you are used to. Is it clear or do you have any questions? Okay, now a more complicated use case again. Uh, in this case we have uh, two containers applications, uh, Rocket Chat probably no, it's a uh, self-hosted ch chat application uh, and it's using um, MongoDB to store its uh, uh, its configuration and its data. So uh, in this case, in the first step, we create Docker network because we want to separate this application uh, from the rest of the Docker containers. Um, anyway, it's it's always a good idea for to create new network for every container on the host you are running because by default all containers are connected to the same network and uh, if one container is rook or it's, it's hacked it, ha it has access to all other containers uh, on the same network so yeah it's, it's, uh, it's very good idea to separate them with different networks so they can't reach um, each other if they are not connected. So uh, for the both of the net for the both containers, we create new net we create new Docker network, and we create new container uh, mon uh, of, mon of Mongo application. Uh, when connecting uh, application or container to the network, you specify the network attribute. You specify name. Uh, name of the network. In here, in this case, it's the same 
as the content name and aliases under which uh, the, the container is available on that network. Uh, Docker is using internal uh, internal DNS, so uh, and it and if uh, it is aliases, uh, it will set up the DNS in a way that the DB and Mongo will point to the uh, MongoDB container. So you don't need to care about IP addresses and stuff. Now, uh, when we create, and also the purge network is true, it's important because without it, uh, the, uh, the MongoDB container will be connected to the both, the default and the new uh, Docker network. So if you specify purge network is true, uh, it will be connected only to the networks you specify in the network's attribute. So. Now, once we create the Mongo, uh, Mongo container, uh, we use MetaTask to refresh inventory because uh, we are using the Docker uh, dynamic inventory and we tell uh, Ansible to refresh the information about the host available so uh, the Ansible knows about the newly created container. And... Uh, okay, so... Um, I'll get back to later. So uh, this is the continuing uh, continuation of the play from before. All these three slides are in the single file. Uh, one playbook can contain multiple plays. So uh, in the same playbook, I just specify a new item, which is a new play. And in this case, um, the host is not local host, but the Docker container. I say use Ansible, I say Ansible to use connection docker and use this uh, docker container. Then Ansible will um, run the task specified here inside of the container. Ansible using docker exec, so you don't need to run SSH inside. But you need to have uh, Python and Python bindings used uh, by the task inside of the container. So in this case we are creating MongoDB user. So in the container I've created for this uh, purpose, there is it's done. It's created just it's based on the Mongo, but I'm installing uh, Python there and Python by Mongo bindings. And that's it. Uh, it's a little bit complicated because I had to use testing uh, testing repositories of Debian, uh, so it it has the latest version of Python Mongo available and it's usable. So I get back to the play which will be run inside of the docker or uh, inside of the mongo container and there I just create the mongodb user with specific attributes. So uh, in a single playbook I can manage the container and the application inside the container without too much hassle. Right. And in the last part of this playbook uh, I create the rocket chat container uh, again, I connect it to the network in Mongo URL environment variable. There is uh, just the DB as host because it will automatically resolve uh, to the uh, to the MongoDB container. And uh, yeah, there's nothing like I I'm using the uh, Ansible Vault here, just for example. And um, there is also one task, Docker Network, which will remove the network if the vibe variable is true. So I can clean not only the containers and the volumes, but also the network if I'm done with this example. Okay, now, building images. Uh, this is the most complex example uh, of this talk. So after this one, there is all only a light one and that's it, so you don't need to worry about your brain if it goes too hot or something. So, uh, for building containers, I, I chose the example of Ghost, which is a blogging platform written in Node.js. And uh, it contains of, it, it, con it will be made of free containers, if I'm if I'm correct, and uh, everything, again, everything you see here is from the single file. Uh, yeah, I just uh, made it to multiple slides so it makes, uh, so, it's, so it's visible. So in the start, 
uh, I say I want to run everything on localhost and I have a couple of uh, variables here a uh, new thing is that I'm specifying the image state uh, state for the uh, docker image which is, uh, which is absent if I don't want it but otherwise present not started so I can't use the C state for uh, container image state uh, yeah rest is simple now in the task I have uh, uh, the in the first two tasks are to build uh, uh, docker images um, usage is really simple important things are name, tag and path. Path is uh, in this case it's a ghost uh, directory or nginx directory where is uh, the docker file basically that's it. Uh, yeah but uh, with this task uh, Ansible automatically looks for the docker file and execute docker build as it would with the docker build command. Uh, force true is important here because um, by default or in an ansible nature is that if something exists it won't uh, it, uh, it the ansible wouldn't repeat the, qu the task to uh, create the, the result again so without force true ansible will check if the name if the image with this name and if this tag exists and won't build it again but if uh, we do any if we do any changes uh, to the docker file or other source files uh, the new image won't be recreated or rebuilt so we need to use force two to automatically uh, to instruct ansible to try to rebuild the image like every time the playbook is run but don't worry the uh, the rebuild is effective as with uh, the docker build so if not too much changed it will be fast and only a couple of last layers will be like changed now uh, next uh, we create docker network again to connect the, the all the containers and isolate them from the rest of the containers running on the host and we create the MarioDB container there's nothing new there is again uh, just a couple of environment variables which are needed. I'm, I'm not using the uh, vault here, but uh, the, the passwords could be hidden in the encrypted file uh, if needed. And uh, I'm, uh, in this part, I'm checking for the MySQL state if it's running, because in the next step, I will be creating the, uh, the ghost container and if the container starts before the MySQL is ready uh, the deployment will fail so uh, this is a little bit hacky I, I admit but uh, in, this, uh, in this task I will query the docker uh, for the IP address so and uh, I store the IP address in my DB IP address variable uh other way how to do this uh is also to use the facts uh, of ansible uh, besides the user defined variables ansible contains facts which are variables uh, automatically populated by ansible about every host um so okay so this example doesn't work with uh, the doc dynam docker dynamic inventory so if I don't have docker dynamic inventory I need to somehow get the IP address with docker inspect command but if I would have that, uh, the docker dynamic inventory I can ask uh, for the IP address of the uh, docker container um, directly ansible so this is an example if you if you need to do something like this here now when I have IP address I can use wait for module which basically uh, asks for host or IP address and port and uh, will ensure that the that some service on that port is listening this is not specific to um, uh, to the database it can be uh, it, it can be HTTP or any kind of network daemon but it ensures that this port is uh, that on this port some service is listening. Uh, there is until until loop, 
which specify that, uh, that this variable, because um, uh, output of this task will be stored in the MariaDB running variable and we will repeat this task until this variable won't be. So, um, so until the task will not be uh, like correctly done. And we say try 10 times and delay uh, 5 seconds between tries. So, uh, after this task completes, uh, we are sure, we can be sure that the MariaDB is running and uh, we can uh, create the, uh, the ghost container we already built. We just uh, specified the name of the image we used when, uh, we, were, when we were uh, building the Docker image. Uh, nothing interesting, and as well there is um, there is the nginx container which is uh, which is uh, which is served as a or which is used as a HTTP proxy in front of the ghost uh, container. Yeah, it's not nothing too much interesting. And again, uh, let's say we want to be sure that the the play finishes when the ghost is running because when the ghost is uh, started for the first time it initializes the database and, and it creates uh, some tasks uh, which can take a couple of seconds. We use alternative for the wait for module which is URI which interacts directly with the URLs and we say that until on this uh, on this address, we can't get a uh, get request with the return code 200. Uh, repeat this task. So in this task, we'll wait for the ghost until the ghost is running, and once it is, uh, the task the play finishes, and we can uh, use or we can uh, use another place or another task uh, which works uh, with ghost if needed to. Okay. Questions? Nope. All right. Last example is about the Docker Compose. So usually, uh, or Docker Compose is uh, used pretty lot, and uh, usually in the GitHub repositories you can find besides the uh, the Docker files also the Docker Compose and you can uh, rewrite the Docker Compose in the with the Ansible, so it can uh, uh, so you don't need to use Docker Compose at all. But if the Docker Compose is um, uh, is complex or you really don't need to uh, rewrite it, uh, you can use uh, this is just some random example of Docker Compose. But in Ansible, you can use Docker Service where you specify project source path uh, to the directory where uh, there is docker compose file. It must be named in docker compose YAML, I think, or something like that. And uh, what Ansible do with this is just it loads um, the docker compose and process it with the docker compose tool. So uh, uh, the the, all the containers and all the resources specified in Docker Compose will be created as with Docker Compose, but you have the additional power of Ansible where you can specify the state and uh, other variable or, and other parameters. You can also specify variables with the env par attribute, I think. Okay. And basically that's it. Uh, this presentation is available at GitHub, my name slash Ansible Docker, where you can find all the complete examples uh, and all the configuration required and you can just uh, uh, try them out on your notebook if you want to. There's my LinkedIn and my colleague who helped create this presentation. So, final questions for me? Anything about Ansible, Docker? Yep. Uh, one question. Uh, you are using Ansible to describe those uh, white labels Okay.
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, the question was why we are using the Docker with Ansible because, uh, in other words, the Docker images available on Docker Hub are various quality. So yeah, uh, now I'm not sure 100 percent. That I'm, I'm not 100% sure if there are modules for LXC with Ansible. I think yeah, there might be, yeah. So you can use that, of course. Uh, we, are using, um, we are using Docker directly because it's mostly because it's so widespread and like everyone is using it and uh, at least like everyone knows about it something and heard about it and uh, it's uh, definitely much easier to use for regular users than LXC where you need to uh, write the file but um, but uh, about the sources yeah there are official uh, there are official images like my mongo mysql and stuff they uh, they are they have state of official meaning that they are uh, they are upgraded at the right at the regular time and uh, and that the the docker uh, company is looking after them so you should be able you should be safe when you are using it uh, the the official images you can f uh, you can recognize them that they don't have author. So usually when you create a Docker image on the, and put it on GitHub, it will be I don't know Pesquifa slash MySQL. But official images are, have only the MySQL or MariaDB or MongoDB in the name. So you can uh, recognize them that. But when you are using containers in production. You 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 can freely use uh, Docker, but you should be you should uh, like build your own images. You you shouldn't use like any uh, images on the internet. I I used some uh, here because uh, they were ready and they were function functional and and they they seems okay, seemed okay. But when uh, you have uh, I don't know company or you are providing some services. You should use the ideally something like uh, OpenShift, where you uh, where you sp where you are working with the sources of the images, not only the Im created images, but uh, you create your own source for the image, and uh, OpenShift will build the image and ship it uh, to the to your production. Right, so you are not only consuming the random images from internet, but you are uh, creating your own. Also, uh, we as Red Hat, we are also we have also our own Docker registry where uh, we provide a couple of uh, tested and uh, uh, tested and safe Docker images which our customer can use. But uh, I think they are freely available, so everyone can use them. And we are doing the automatic rebuilds of if there is like CV or some security issue, uh, so we automatically did it. But not everyone on the Docker Hub is doing that, so we need to be aware of what you are using and consuming. Yep. Okay. Any other question? Yep. Uh, not, not me directly. I, I'm not a big fan of Vagrant, but. Uh, I, if, if I think it's uh, definitely possible. You can, I think you can manage the Vagrant boxes with Ansible, like create the Vagrant box, or as well you can use the Ansible inside of the Vagrant boxes. So uh, I think there are some hooks which will automatically uh, copy the. It's, uh, it's really interesting because uh, I was doing this call before, like two weeks before in uh, Prague. And like I was uh, surprised that, uh, that most of the people there knew about Ansible. So it was it was like first time yeah. I see a crowd with where the most new people know something about Ansible than other yeah. ways. It's it's sometimes sometimes really different. Uh, some technologies are well known, others aren't. 